How's it going guys? It's Savone with SJ Fly Fishing and today I'm going to try and show you how to set up a new fly reel. Now I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of all the different parts and purposes of what goes into setting up a new fly reel, but I guess all I could say is all you need to set up a new fly reel is an empty fly reel, the backing of your choice, and fly line of your choice and I'll also show you how to put on a leader as well and so to start here I have a 3-4 weight fly reel that I uh, bought on Amazon it wasn't crazy expensive um, I just want to fly fish on a budget for now I don't really want to invest too much money in uh, very nice equipment in case um, anything changes with it and so I'm um, kind of being a cheapskate and buying the cheap stuff off Amazon. But uh, this is a reel made uh, by, I guess, a company called Angler's Dream. And it has a one-way drag. It doesn't have the normal click you would hear with a fly reel while reeling in. But let's say a fish wants to take off with the line, there's a drag system that'll stop that fish and give it some resistance. And with that, it uh, also came with some 30 pound backing, which is what goes on the reel first. And backing isn't necessarily what helps you cast and it isn't necessarily what you depend on to be able to reel the fish in. Its main purpose is to kind of build the arbor of the reel and kind of make this arbor seem thicker and so with each crank you crank in while reeling in a fish it will pull in more line rather than if you just put fly line straight on the arbor of the spool and so that'll go on first and depending on what kind of fishing you're going to do uh like if you're going for more big game you'll usually use 30 pound or um, a little bit stronger backing I usually use 20 pound whenever I set up a reel, just because I'm not planning on doing very big fishing. But um, for some reason, this company had sent me 30 pound backing. And uh, the amount of backing that goes on is also dependent on the kind of fishing you do. So for smaller uh, weight lines, so for three, four weights, you usually only use about 80 to 100 yards of backing for five, six weight, which is right in the middle. It's kind of the average Joe about size, you'll usually use about 100 to 120 yards. And if you get up into the seven, eight, nine weight reels, uh, they'll use a lot more backing. They'll use a bit stronger stuff. And so I'm just going to show you how I tie this on and I'm going to spool it up. And then I'm going to show you how I attach the fly line and the leader. So whenever I'm setting up a reel, whether it's for spin fishing or anything like that, I like to take the reel and I actually put it on the rod and I'll also take whatever I'm spooling onto the reel, whether it's monofilament, braid or anything like that, and I'll put it through the first guide. So I'm able to kind of use that first guide as a tool to straighten the line, make sure it's um, feeding onto the reel straight and uh, it kind of helps makes everything a little easier. And so the knot that I'm going to show you guys how to use to put, just to attach this backing to the reel is going to be the uni knot. Now you can use the more traditional arbor knot, which is what most spinning and bait casting guys use when um, they put line on their reels. But um, I learned this me the method from watching a Mad River Outfitters video on how to set up a fly reel. And um, it kind of makes it a little easier for me at least. I like using this knot. It's not a very hard knot to tie. And so once we've got that on there, to make the uni knot, you take the standing end and you take the tag end looped around the reel. And then you take them both and pinch them. And with the tag end, you kind of loop it around and you just create a loop. See, the loop isn't going around the standing end. The loop is just right next to the standing end. And so with this extra tag end, 
you take it and you wrap it around. Uh, I like to do five times. It's really your own personal preference. Uh, I prefer five just because it makes a real nice, strong, tight knot. And so once I have it looped through five times like that, I like to just kind of pull on it a little bit just to establish the knot. Kind of like that. But I don't like to completely cinch it down yet. And so once I have that knot kind of established there, I'll just hold on the standing end and I'll pull it down until it cinches down on the fly reel. And I'll even hold the spool to make sure it doesn't spin and kind of just really pull on it. And sometimes I'll take my fingernail and push the knot down onto the spool just to really make sure it's on there tight. I give it a tug on the tag end as well. And kind of just finagle it back and forth until you feel like the knot's nice and strong and down on the reel. And there's no need to leave this tag in, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my nippers to take that off. Man, it looks like I need to get new nippers. These things are not sharp at all. There we go. And after messing with it and trying to clip off that tag end, I'll go ahead and re-tighten this down. And so once I have that, I like to pull all the slack through. Now you can use a, like a buddy system and put a pen or something through the hole in the middle of this spool so then have them stand out and hold it for you while you reel it in. But uh, I don't have anybody here to help me with that right now. So I like to set the spool down. So once I reel it in, it's able to come off the spool, kind of like the way a uh, line comes off of a spin, a spinning reel whenever you cast. And to make sure that the line goes on tight, I also like to pinch it up here with my fingers and reel it on at the same time. And you can see that the line tightens up, but it's also coming off the spool in an even manner. And I'll spool the backing on until I feel there's a good amount that it will provide enough support for the fly line, but also still have enough space to fit the entire fly line. And so I'll spool this up until I feel it's ready. And then I'll get back with you guys when I'm going to attach the fly line. Okay, guys, so I've got all that backing on. Um, I didn't put a crazy amount on. Uh, it's... I think it's substantial. I made sure to leave enough space between the frame and uh, the backing to make sure that I am pretty sure I'll be able to fit all my fly line in there. And so to attach my fly line, I'm just gonna pull out some of this backing so I'm able to do the knot that I'm gonna show you guys. And so when you buy fly line, I suggest that you actually pay for a nice, fly line that has a good reputation um please don't do what i did and buy cheap fly line because more often than not it'll come in just a bag and not on a spool and you'll have a tangled horrible mess like this so i'm just gonna have to deal with this and work around it um just, sometimes you gotta persevere through things like that and so on a fly line if it doesn't come on a spool it'll have an end that has a sticker on it that says this end to reel and fly line that comes on a spool will also have this and so this is the end of the fly line that's going to get attached to your backing now i know the sticker says this end to reel i wouldn't just put straight fly line on a reel um, i would put backing on it first and attach the fly line to the backing and uh, oftentimes It'll also have a welded loop in it, or whereas this one doesn't. So I'll show you what not to use to be able to attach that. And the other end of the fly line of this one actually does have a loop. Uh, one I bought previously didn't have a loop. And so I'll show you how to attach the leader to this end in a second. 
And so with this end uh, that's gonna get attached to the backing, we'll go ahead and take this sticker off and I'll show you how to use a kind of a nail knot tying tool to be able to help and create the uh, knot we need to be able to tie on our uh, tie on our fly line. And so I'll just pull more of this out. I'll go ahead and feed it back through this guide because that'll just help make things a little easier. Like I said before about when putting on backing. And so with this tool, uh, this is actually on a pair of my nippers um, that I bought in a pack with some other equipment. I'll talk about all the equipment in a future video. But on here is this tool on the front and I'm gonna go ahead and swing that out. And that's what I use to help me tie nail knots. And so to be able to tie a nail knot, you take the backing and you put it on this thumb rest and you rest your thumb on top of it. And there's this groove down here and you go ahead and put the backing down through that groove and then you start to wind the backing around the tool. And each consecutive wind you do is behind the previous wind you did. And so I'm gonna do about eight. So there's six, seven, and eight. And just make sure those are tight. And once you have your last wind around that you're gonna do, I like to put my index finger to kind of hold all those nice and tight. And with the free tag end, I like to, sometimes if it frays, I'll burn the end of it like I did with this because it'll just make it much easier to feed through the tool. So you feed it back through the tool until it comes out of the front. And sometimes it'll be a little stubborn and not wanna go through. So I just kinda keep working with it, keep kinda messing with it until it wants to come through. And if it really doesn't wanna come through, you can go ahead and start over. And so, I've almost got it here. It's really close to coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this and all these winds up a tiny bit. And keep working this thing through. And see, it came back out, so let's try one more time. Yeah, so this has given me some trouble, so I'm gonna figure this out on my own. I'll get back to you once I get it back through the tool. Okay, so I finally got that tag in through. And so to attach the fly line, you're gonna go ahead and feed the end of your fly line where I have that sticker that says this end to reel. And you're gonna feed it in through that tool until it comes out of the other side. And then some people will just pull it tight. What I like to do is kind of hold on to the tag end of the backing and also pinch all of the wind arounds and kind of just pull them off and kind of situate the knot so it's all nice and even then I'll kind of pull it a little tight so it'll hold on to the fly line and if you want to be very peculiar and really cheap about every single inch of your fly line, you can go ahead and take your fly line and slide it through that knot so you can use as much of it as possible. And once you're ready to tighten down that knot, just take the tag end and the standing end of your backing and just really cinch it down, really tighten it and that's how you'll tie a nail knot and i mean that knot is strong that fly line is not going to go anywhere and so after that knot's done i'll take the nippers and i'll cut off the extra backing and i'll cut off that little bit of extra fly line that's on the back there just because those are parts that aren't necessary and so we've got a nice, strong nail knot there. And so just like before with spooling on the backing, you'll go ahead and spool on the fly line now that it's attached to the backing. 
And so I'm, I'm gonna do that and I'll catch up with you guys once I'm done and I'm gonna start putting on the leader and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so what after what seemed like forever, I finally got the fly line untangled and put on the reel. And so as you can see there, there's still a little bit of space in between where the fly line is and the frame of the reel. And so that's pretty good. So I estimated on a pretty good amount of backing to put on there. And so now we're gonna put a leader on. And so like I was talking about before, this end of the fly line has a loop in it. And so with a leader, we're gonna do a loop to loop connection. And uh, this actually came with the leader. And so another thing with, that, with leaders is they don't come on a spool because they're so small. And so you find what's called the butt section of the leader. And uh, the butt section is the big thick part. And you take this butt section and it's usually what's wrapped around the whole entire thing to keep it coiled up. So I like to just hold it in one hand and I'll take the butt section with the loop and I'll feed it through once, twice, three times. And then I'll look and see if it'll go a fourth, which usually it does. And there we go, a fourth time. And then I'll check again for a fifth time and it looks like it's done for now. So now I like to take it and put it on my fingers like this and find the tippet section. So the very end of your leader that the, part, uh, that the fly gets tied on is called the tippet. And so I'll take that and oh, actually I was wrong. There was one more. Let's do that, have that go around. And you know what, we'll do it the other way. And we'll just pull the butt section all the way out until this leader is completely straightened out. And um, to connect it, it's actually pretty simple. And so we'll take the loop that's in our fly line and the loop that's in our leader and we'll take our fly line and we'll put the loop in the fly line through the loop in the leader and then we'll take the leader kind of make a loop there and feed it through the loop that is in the fly line. So it's fly line through leader, then leader through fly line is how I like to remember that. So let's feed that through. And then you just pull the rest of the leader all the way through. And then once you have that, you pull them tight. If the knot on the leader is a little big, you might have to kind of work the loop on the fly line around the knot on the leader. There we go. And then once you have that, you just pull it tight. And there's your loop to loop connection. And it kind of makes a square knot. Um, it's, it's effective. Um, it's not really my favorite way to connect a leader and fly line. I like to just clip off the loops that are on the leader, the leader and the fly line. I clip off the loops on both and now I'll actually attach it with another nail knot. Kind of like how uh, I attached the backing to the fly line. I'll wrap the butt section of the leader around the end of the fly line and uh, I find that it it works a little better for me. You can do it whichever way you prefer, but um, that's the way that I like to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip off these and I'm going to tie a nail knot. And so 
I will catch up with you guys after I tie those knots and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I've got the uh, leader tied onto the fly line with the nail knot. Uh, it, I'll admit it's not the prettiest nail knot I've ever done, but it's, it's still strong. And uh, what's good to do with leaders, especially if you have a package leader um, that comes all wound up like I showed you before, um, monofilament has memory. And so a good way to get rid of that memory so it doesn't want to coil up is to just take it and kind of just run it through your fingers. And it'll kind of generate some heat from the friction of it going through your fingers. And that heat will help straighten out that leader and so I like to do that a few times after I take a leader out of the package and attach it it just it helps the uh, the leader lay on the water a lot better and it helps uh, kind of get that transfer of energy and it, I feel that it helps it be more efficient and so and once that's done I just take my fly line, I reel it up, reel the leader all the way in, all the way until I've just got the very end of the leader in my fingertips. And then I'll carefully make sure that it just ends up right there on top of the reel. So you can see the bit of tip is sitting up there. And then I, just like to store it like that. And so I know this video was a little bit long. There was a couple speed bumps in there. Um, I apologize for the pause I had to take to put the backing through the uh, nail knot tool. And I also apologize for the sound of the spool falling down while I was winding on my backing. But um, those are some speed bumps I had to work through and you might have to work through some speed bumps whenever you set up a fly reel. So um, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope that it was informative in some type of way. And I hope at least one of you learned how to set up a fly reel today. And um, I hope that you would subscribe and like the video. Um, uh, please leave me feedback in the comments about how I did, how, uh, how you guys set up fly reels. Um, if there's any tips that you have for me, I will gladly receive them. And, um, again, I just want to thank you for watching my video. I'll make sure to let you know on my Instagram at SJ underscore fly fishing when I'm releasing another video. Um, please follow me at that Instagram. Again, it's SJ underscore fly fishing. And so, uh, I should be releasing another video on the next couple days or so. Uh, so thank you again. I hope everyone has a great day.